swing, Charlie. Literally. Darkest girls go bye bye. Welcome back, or welcome to the podcast. Uh, <laughs> we have actually recorded this once before, but under a, a mishap on my part, I cleared my computer without uploading or saving the recorded file. And I was pretty sad because we had, um, I, I had remembered that we had some good laughs and yeah. Um, I know you had told a story. I, I, I kind of want, I might make you retell it. Did, okay. It's you, funny because I remember laughing about it. I just can't remember telling it. Like you know what which we, one I'm talking what, about? I don't remember the, like what it was about, but I honestly, and, and all morning I was like, what was that thing that I had to remember that I told Owen it, before? It was the egg. Were you, I think it was, you cracked an egg and and something came oh! out. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. I actually do want to say, I don't know if you, I wondered, cause I got a whole bunch of, um, prints from Streamly. Yes. I got a ton. I, I have five Valorant ones. Yeah. So I, I have three hanging up right now and I will not show them because I hung them up and <laughs> They are quite uneven, quite sporadically. You would think I was trying to be art artistic about it, but that's not. I tried to actually put them in a line, and it did not work. And it did, no. But that's still art, you know. It is art. It's my art. <laughs> and then I have, Do you, re, do you did you know you were signing this for me when you did it? What did I write on it? Uh, just a heart and texture, and then you signed your name. But I have, I have one of you. I absolutely remember signing it. I remember all of them. And it was like, I was proper, like, torn between writing a whole, like, message and then just doing what you'd ask, which was texture. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was well, like, come on. I was yeah. like, I'm putting a heart. <laughs> I, I did that because, I don't know. I, I didn't want, I know Miranda wrote a little bit more. Um, and then I got one from Brimstone or Steve. He doesn't know who I am, so obviously he just did. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. And then I have one from uh, Jason Omen, and then I got yeah. one from Gabe, too. Ooh. So I got a pretty good lineup. My collection. Solid. Yeah. It's very solid. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I, I didn't want... You know, I didn't want to pull any strings, so I just let it, you know, go or whatever, so. I should have gone with my instinct. Don't worry, I'll send you another one. <laughs> I have more prints. I just got to remember. You know when you do, like, a spring cleaning in uh -huh. summer? So it's more like summer cleaning. And then you forget where you neatly packed everything <laughs> away. That's literally my vibe right now. I'm looking around. I'm like, wait, I don't even, do I still have? Yeah, panic. How, this might be very uh, maybe ignorant of me, but what's the weather like right now for you? So it's okay. I'm gonna tell the absolute truth. Okay. So, <laughs> um, obviously, I live in Australia, mm -hmm. and um, where I live now is not where I grew up. I grew up in Sydney. Um, Western Sydney, which is a thing, um, an amazing thing. Sorry, I just feel like I'm talking and you can only see like half of my body, which is so weird. Oh, it's because, oh, look at that. Okay. Anyway, so I live in um, Melbourne and Melbourne is in a state called Victoria. And so where I grew up is Western Sydney, which is New South Wales. It's another state entirely. And um, I feel like everyone knows that the weather in sydney is just super consistent like if it's summer it's hot if it's raining it's going to rain for a day or two whereas melbourne we grew up hearing it's four seasons in a day and they're not exaggerating <laughs> it is it will be super blue sky sunny and then 15 minutes later it is hailing and 15 minutes after that the sun's back out and you're like it's the super gaslighting weather but 
um in terms of like seasons we're the opposite to you guys so okay just yeah december january jan feb i think is summer for us so we get to have summer summer holidays like um christmas new year's all of that stuff at once and it's just <laughs> it's just awesome <laughs> i don't know if this is global or maybe it's an american thing but like i feel like that is just so wrong in my head like but like <laughs> i know it's kind of like the accent thing when someone says like from america like oh you have an accent like everyone has an accent right yeah and so it's just like i don't know if it's an, a, an american thing to be like we're correct and like you know that's my ideology is like yep but yep. it, it would yeah, make that. sense to be like oh that's normal for me and be like oh it's kind of weird to think about like december being the summer month for you yeah but i don't know it, it does sound odd to me because you know where i'm from summer or december is bitter cold and like below oh, I below i mean i think that's the interesting thing is for us even though christmas is hot summer um it's beach it's barbecue we are still a very much a um like you know we're still a british colony <laughs> in many ways and we're super tied to america as a cultural influence so even though it's hot we still have like you know roast dinner re recipes come out and there are still references to snow and all the movies we watch like all the classic christmas movies are american so you know it's home alone and that so there's like this weird juxtaposition of the weather's hot um you're having a barbecue you're jumping into the pool but you want to feel cozy yeah. um so the colors are the same you still have a christmas tree and christmas lights. i think that's my favorite thing is being able to like walk outside and see the lights in like warm weather and like it's like and the sun the sun doesn't set early so it's like 9 10 p.m it's warm and you're seeing all these lights and stuff but interestingly up to that point is this year um was one of my first years back since i moved back from overseas and i don't know if it's climate change or what but it was not hot Christmas time for us, is you, especially in New South Wales, is bushfire season. Uh, there was it, it rained the full three weeks leading up to and into Christmas, so that we, was weird. We had a decently warm Christmas here, and then um, kind of like like ten days into January, I think we we had like a a snowstorm that had like six inches of snow and then and then a couple of days later another like seven so we had like a, over a foot of snow on the ground which was i did not leave the house for many days <laughs> i was not doing it and when i did like the thing about certain i don't know it seems like you always forget like because it takes a year to get back to that season again and like i just forget what it's like to navigate in snow and yeah like, i went outside with like a thin layer of socks and like i'm in the car and i'm like my toes are going to fall off like, how did i not remember to like just at least like put on thicker socks or put on two pairs of socks and then like just so many different things yeah it's like i cannot but every time i'm always so excited for the cold and snow and then it gets here and it's like i would do anything else in the entire world than be out in the snow right now i can't i cannot do it it's such a novelty for us like the first time i so i oh gosh i can't even spoke the first time i saw snow um i had gone to the uk and um, it was around this time of the year and my friend and I, my auntie woke us up at like 5 a.m. She's like, okay, girls, it's snowing. And we were like, how, how old were you? <laughs> we just don't see it. We how, don't see it. How old were you when you saw snow? Oh, uh, I was like in my, uh, 
Oh, uh, I was probably like 19. Oh, wow. Like, that's, yeah, that's gotta be so I, interesting to go like that long. That like, long. you know, I grew up every December. Or no, I mean, sometimes like November, or December, all the way even till like we've had snow in May before. Like, yeah, like just crazy. So like, I don't know. I've never been without snow. Like I've never lived anywhere else than the Midwest of like, cause the Midwest is like, you get every season, you know? So we have blazing hot summers and really cold winters. Yeah. So I've like, oh, just known that stuff. So like, I don't, It'd be such an odd thing. I don't know any climate that, or like anything that I could experience for the first time now and be like. In that way? Yeah. Do you guys get bushfires? Get what? Bushfires? Is that just like, like fires? Yeah, in the bush. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say we, we like people's cornfields start on fire. Oh, okay. That that's probably close. Like, yeah, yeah. For us, that's probably the one thing. Like, especially the area I grew up in, people would be like, "You're moving. Oh, you live out there. Oh, bushfire. You know, the Blue Mountains burn a lot. It's one. That's one of the things that we're used to. Um, so everyone's used to. We have this like scale thing in all the areas that'll say whether it's. Um, whether like what the water restrict sorry the fire restrictions are um yeah. and water restrictions actually so if it's getting too hot we get droughts in australia so they'll start restricting the amount of water each household can use hmm. um but that's like that's been in i think is it el nino or el nino yeah el nino yeah. when you're in a year of el nino then that's when it gets so hot that they'll start putting water restrictions in um but fire restrictions are like if it's over a certain thing, so we use Celsius. So if it's like above 40 something degrees, um, you can't even light a match. So if you're a, yeah, a smoker or something, cause it'll just take one match being lit, hot wind throws that. And then you've like raised a whole <laughs> wow. patch of bushland. So yeah, when it's an extreme, um, you cannot do anything with fire nothing um wow. so yeah but, but i have, do remember we'll have like oh, fire advisories where like I... the chances like just like that the chances of something getting out of control of it being dry and the wind and stuff like that so like mm. we'll get like an alert or something you know like from mine is like my weather app or something whenever no. yeah, I'll get yes like, yeah do you guys get like, yeah. I don't know, because it's, it's interesting. I'm really big into weather because I'm scared of weather. Oh, as in As in extreme? like, yeah, like extreme weather. Um, but like, I know the United States has the most tornadoes and tornadoes mm. is like my biggest fear. Like, I, I cannot express to you, like, how scary that is for me. Um, Do you get them in the Midwest? Oh, yeah. That's, oh. I live in a place that is deemed Tornado Alley. Like, you know, when I think, when I think of, like, places to move, I immediately think of the chances of tornadoes. I would never move anywhere where the chance is higher than where I am at now. <laughs> What's higher? Have you like Googled that information? Yeah, um, like the more south you get. Because the reason that it happens is because we have the Rocky Mountains. Yeah. And you have the air from the Gulf of Mexico. And so that cold air from over the mountains meets the warm air from the Gulf of Mexico. And that's how, right. yeah, they don't mix. They don't mix well. Yeah. And, 
you know, it's just not a very pleasant experience. And, like, the stuff that I've gone through, like, I haven't even gone through the worst of it, but I've gone through some some stuff, and it's it's terrifying. When was the last tornado you experienced? I mean, I've never actually been, you know, physically, I mean, knock on wood. Um, but I, I, don't know if that was, hold on. I had a, I had a pretty bad experience March of 2022 of one being a, a big one being very close to me and like having to be down in the basement Ooh. And, like um it was it was too close for comfort um, yeah and it was it was a large one and that was unexplainably terrifying and yeah. like that was a day that my like just a quick to make a long story short my siblings so like two of my brothers they wanted me to go to at the time it was the batman was the movie and they wanted me to go really bad um and then i ended up staying home so i was i had like one other of my roommates there um and i because i knew that there was a chance for bad weather that day and then they're like it's not gonna happen you know i'm talking to my mom she's saying like you know tornadoes don't happen in march and then uh sure enough it happens and then they come home and they're like yeah if you would have been there like they sh they told everyone you can't leave there's a tornado warning like the sirens going on like just all this crazy stuff my biggest thing is i don't want to be out in public when it, like i don't want to be in like a walmart or something and then they're like everyone go to the safe place you're stuck with all these people yeah so that's like my oh, right. biggest. I'm like, I'm just staying home this day. Like this day. So it's not the tornado that freaks you out. It's where you'll possibly be stuck. You know what? Like one of my biggest things about it is like, what do you do aftermath? Like post. Yeah, the clean up. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Like I don't, Ooh. where am I going to sleep that night? Oh. Like, do I have to? Well, I, I feel like. I don't even know if you'd want to sleep. Like, I feel like it is so traumatic. That, yeah, that, it definitely is. Yeah. That that's like, you're not even thinking about that. You're just going, what's going on? And if you've, you've, if you've got people you've lost, you want to find them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you're right. It's, it's big. It's big. Yeah. I think natural disasters are, or extreme weather. And it's interesting because I don't know when I've thought or, or spoken about this before, but there's just no country or region where there isn't anything, I feel. And I could be wrong. Hopefully someone can correct me after listening to this, right? Oh, this particular island or whatever. But it's like, yeah, you think about it. Everywhere has its things. Like you'd be like, oh, I go to Japan, earthquakes. Yeah, yeah you know, your and your cons. You gotta yeah. pick your poison. So if it's it, it pick your poison. If it's weather, pick pick the one that you can handle. Um I think I'm afraid of tsunamis. That's yeah, we don't yeah. get them in Ghana, thank God. I think Ghana's actually Ghana's actually really good weather wise, actually. Yeah, actually that's somewhere I could stay easy because the weather just doesn't do the crazy things, actually. But yeah, tsunami, um, we don't get them in Australia, but a lot of Australians go to Bali, in, which is just a couple of hours away. And um, yeah, there was a massive one, I think it was 2010 or something. There's a whole movie about it. Don't ask me why I watched the movie, but <laughs> I was like, oh, yo, there is no way. Whew, thinking about it. Yeah, that's, 
I think I don't know the thing about like a hurricane is that they yeah. they approach so like you they, have time but not yeah. everyone has the like the life to just leave you know and a lot of people hunker down in them I I I've even thought about like when the forecast comes out where I'm at right now I've thought about leaving like just going like because I just don't want to experience it and I'll talk yeah. to my family and they're like that's so crazy that you want to leave and I'm like if you know something bad is coming like I don't get like I get it well, but like I don't know I just I don't I'm not a big I'm not a big weather fan I like that's why yeah. I like winter so much just because like that stuff doesn't happen because everything's just dead <laughs> yeah 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 we had um what's it called there's a word for it if you come on um in yeah in summer during high bush bushfire weather there's a, a thing where it's like um stay or defend leave or defend so it's like you can either like you said leave when you know that it's um because once a bushfire starts burning it just needs to burn its way out so yeah. if you know you're in its line um they'll tell you that you can either leave or you can um defend your home in which case you've got to have certain amount of hoses and um you know buckets and you've got to wet your roof with stuff and um prior to summer they'll do what they call back burning so they'll burn sections of of um oh, yeah. land yeah and you know for us they're not um i learned years ago and since then my my idea of a bushfire really shifted even though it's really scary um it's the only way that a lot of Australia's natural flora and fauna can regrow. Like eucalyptus trees can't regrow if there's no bushfire um, because the seeds are too hard to crack. It needs extreme heat to open in order to regenerate. Um, so once I learned that, I was like, okay, so it's not this thing that's not good for the environment. It's actually, it's actually part of how the environment works. Mm -hmm. What makes it feel dangerous is that we've built in areas where, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, yeah. When my family first moved to an area called Blacktown, there had been, we moved in 96, there had been fires there in 94. And these were some of the worst, like the kind of fires that, you know, in those days before social media and the internet and all that, um, it made news all over the world. So our family in America were calling my parents and saying like, you guys like, hey, we heard there are fires. And my dad's like, oh, where we live is like an hour and a half away. And then my parents are like, oh, we're moving to Blacktown two years later. And I was like, what? why would we, I don't want to, why? I was like nine. I'm like, I don't want to live there. Obviously I had no choice. And I remember that very first summer, from the back of our, um, from our backyard, you can see the Blue Mountains. And this was the first time I realized how bushfire smoke works in that on a good day, you can see the mountains on a fiery day, depending on how severe it is, you either see haze or just nothing. Mm. I remember walking out of the, the front door during the holidays one day to play. And I see like, I see ash and then this burnt leaf comes flying down and I was like, oh my God, the fire's here. Like, <laughs> that is, that's got to be scary though, like seeing that for the first I, time. It wasn't there. It, we were way too far away. Like the, the, oh, the yeah. mountains, are, yeah, the mountains are what, 45, good 45 minute drive from where we lived. And there certainly wasn't enough foliage for it to come all that way but that's how far the ash was burning that is pretty crazy though yeah yeah it was very scary Woo! i i did a quick google search before yes were you in the great gatsby Owen, you just find things out who are you um <laughs> 
I was. I, it's so, I, I was. I was. <laughs> I, I, I mean it. That's crazy. I mean, I've never seen The Great Gatsby, but I know the, the aura around The Great Gatsby. Mm. I think you would actually, are you a movie buff? Like, do you? I'm not. I can, if you name most of the movies that, like, you should have seen if you're a movie buff, I'm like, I haven't seen it. Probably never will. Okay, good. Because I felt like my next thing of me not being, like, I like the idea of being a movie buff. Yeah. And, like, I totally want to be. But, like, I'll sit and watch a movie and just my attention, like, just it's doesn't. Not, not grabbed. It's not grabbing. Oh, and I, ever? Not, not necessarily ever, but I really have to be into the idea of it beforehand. And, mm. like, I feel like maybe my mind is made up if I'm going to watch the movie subconsciously by just if you gave me a summary of it and I'm very particular yeah. with like what interests me. Do you, so th my question is, is this a, is it a genre thing? Is it a, like what makes you fall as asleep? I don't necessarily know if there's something that I could put my finger on that would be like, yeah. it didn't do this or this. I think it's just inherently the the hook of the movie. Like, from the start, yeah. it starts too slow. Yeah. It, um, I mean, same things with TV shows. It's like, I, the amount of times I've watched 20 minutes of the first episode and just have never touched it again. Yeah. Like, pretty significant. And then people will tell me, you just gotta, you gotta, it, it starts it's off slow. It. And I'm like, is it really a good TV show if, like, it can't... It's a slow burn. Yeah, if I have to watch the first season and then the second season starts good, like, that's when it starts to get yeah. Like, I think we have to have a talk on, like, if that's even a good TV show. Yeah, I agree with that. I, well, I wonder if it's, if it's um, like, if the majority, and this is a question slash statement, but if the majority of the movies that you're watching are, like, are you watching a range? So, for example, are you watching predominantly Hollywood movies or are you watching independent films or are you going into other industries or, or genres? Um, yeah. I would say a lot of Hollywood. I don't, yeah, probably just predominantly Hollywood movies. I don't think, yeah. like sometimes like production quality can get me like lately because I am into film. Like, I mm -hmm. love cinematography, and I love all that stuff. But, like, I ha I don't have that wide range of, um, like, a film library that I've, I've seen. But, like, I do yeah. understand certain things, and, like, I do have a, a preference on how something looks and is shot and stuff. And, like, yeah. most of the newer... I notice it a lot with, like, newer Netflix movies. That I'm not really a big fan of how they're shot. And, like, Ooh. my ideal thing is, uh, like, range is, like, a, maybe, like, 2005 to, like, 2015 in there. Like, those, that production quality is, like, probably where I would want a movie to be. Um, what movie from that era stands out to you? I love, like, I mean, I love superhero movies, so, like, the, the Batman movies yeah uh like those are shot really well to me um i would have to do you use letterbox at all no do you know what it is i i know it's like i mean a... i just saw the policeman walking outside but <laughs> um it's like a social media for movies and like you can oh yeah also oh, you are so you're a movie buff but you don't like movies kind of yeah I that's interesting yeah like interstellar that's a that's a i mean that's a classic one 
Um, but yeah, just I mean, Christopher Nolan is a he's a he's a good director that I enjoy. That you like. It's interesting because I can just stop saying that. I don't know where I learned it from. I had a professor, uh, yeah, a lecturer at school um, that used to always say, don't use the word interesting when you're answering a question to the whole class. And that's when I realized how much people use the word interesting. So I'm shocked that I keep saying it, but I digress. Um, what I've noticed about myself is I haven't had a lot of time for um, Hollywood um, stuff. But if you ask me about like Korean or Nigerian or like French television or film or TV, like that's where I'm living, um, you know, and, and it's, yeah, a lot of people would be like, oh, I mean, I have a lot of friends that are of different African backgrounds are like, oh yeah, the quality of African movies and, and I'm like, yeah, you just got to watch the right ones. Like every industry has its levels and, yeah. you know, and when you get a good quality one, like it's, really good um a lot of south african tv shows are really like high highly engaging i find and i just think korean content like on all <laughs> areas is just super like why why so dramatic why so cute why so evil like it's, it's all the extremes like if it's cute it's really cute if it's like funny it's like oh this is funny um <laughs> But yeah, I'm wondering if that might change your, not that you have to like movies, but I wonder if that might sort of looking into other genres, like Bollywood. Oh, I love Bollywood movies. Um, and so, yeah, I wonder if that might change whether you define yourself as someone who likes movies or whether it still stays within that particular niche, which I think is fine. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's it's. I don't know. I'm also not. I'm not someone to uh, to knock something before I try it. So like, uh, those all. I don't know. I always ask for like, movie or like book recommendations, like things like that, because I'm. I I like to feel like I'm very open minded about about things, and like I've tried like i keep trying anime oh yeah but like i just i i nothing has really but i know there's something i feel like there is something for everyone in that genre because there is right. so much and so it's like yeah. i don't know and so it, it is definitely difficult i just haven't found my my thing yeah, I hear that. I totally hear that. I was just looking at my bookcase when you mentioned, like, something, you said something just then that made me look at my bookcase, and I was like, oh, yeah, my my taste over the last year, I like, there are things that I thoroughly enjoy that I would recommend to people, and then I hear them, like, make comments about stuff, and I'm like, oh, maybe my taste is not it, um, <laughs> but I still like it. Um, when I finished up on Harry Potter last year, one of the things – one of my colleagues was saying about me was that like I have terrible taste in in um reality television <laughs> and I was like no, no, no. it's not that I have terrible taste it's that I'm sitting in a crossover every day <laughs> doing the same show every day and I need something a little bit mindless um and it just so happens that reality tv gives me that <laughs> what are you, um but what, I was watching what genre sorry? of reality tv do you like I don't even know what the genre is. Well, okay, let me stop. Like, is it I dating love... or is it like following people around? <laughs> is it? I love cooking, like like cooking competitions. Oh. You and my um, mom. But I... You and my mom. Yeah. Sit down. And... Yeah, well. Does she watch The Great British Bake Off? I think you guys have one of American versions. The Great. I think you guys call it The Great British Baking Show. I'm sure. I'm sure she has. I'm, I'm not one to, uh, yeah. to look over and see or know exactly i'll be like what are you, like, what are you watching and she's like i don't know i'm like, you had to turn it on how could you not know what you're watching i love that yeah i love it um the one one of the shows that i was watching in the crossover a lot was glow up which is like a makeup like competition um 
And that one was, I thought that was very interesting. I love anything that has like a creative element, but not all reality shows are great. Uh, and then um, I'm really into Love is Blind. <laughs> I think I've seen at least the poster or something for that. Yeah, it's definitely what. So this is the thing. People are like, oh my gosh, how can you watch it? And I'm like, I'm learning so much about other cultures just by watching this show um, because there's obviously there's an American one. It started in America, but now they've got Brazil, they've got Japan, they've got Sweden. And just from watching a couple of seasons of each, I mean, the, the Japanese one only lasted one season, I think, because it's just culturally it doesn't work for them. Um, there are a lot of things that they had to change about the way it works because, yeah, culturally you just wouldn't do some of that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I find it, I find that even though they look trashy to a lot of people, you just learn about how cultures communicate what's, like, how people get paired up and what makes that happen, who it works for. You know me, I'm super in the race framework. So like, who does this show work best for? Um, who did like, yeah, who gets the, the benefit of it as a blind exercise? Um, anyway, so that's me. <laughs> I love Love is Blind. I'm watching the Swedish one now and my favorite thing about it is listening to the language. Also, subtitles, I can't do dubbing. Dubbing makes it feel like I'm watching a really bad, like, telenovela. And, yeah, I can't do dubbing. So I need to hear the language and then read it. Yeah. So that's me. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Are we... Can we get the egg story? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So I don't even know why. Why were we talking about eggs? We got on the topic of, of food, food that we both enjoy. Um, I think I might have mentioned the leftovers, and then you said that you, you got sick from leftovers one time, and maybe it was like pancakes or something. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then it's got to be mixed. I don't know exactly how we got there, but it's mixed in to that. To yeah, that for sure. <laughs> so basically, um, I was, this is, yeah, well, quite a few years ago. So I love making, um, what do they, we call them two-minute noodles here, or instant noodles. Mm -hmm. Ramen, I think, yep, ramen is what noodles. I've seen them for if you guys know ramen noodles. Um, and in Ghana and Nigeria, it's the brand that they call it Indomie. Um, so noodles is one of my things. I love it. It's a pastime. My sister, my partner, we all just love noodles. And so you know how everyone has their own, like, way of making Like, every, some people like it really soupy. Other people yeah. like it really dry. Yeah. Um, and one of my favorite ways to make the Indomie Migoreng flavor noodles, a fried noodle flavor, is to like cook them with, um, I like mine a little bit soupy. And then I love having like a scrambled egg, but not one that you've whisked. Like I just crack it in and then scramble it. And I love that on top of my noodles. So one day I was like, really, I was quite hungry. Um, and I'm like, I'm just going to do this, whisk up my eggs and then, just sit down and like chill. Ah, so <laughs> made my noodles. I go to like fry my eggs. I pick up the egg. And so in Ghana, they crack it. They'll use the back of a knife, um, like a butter knife to crack it into something else before they put it into the pan. And now I know why. <laughs> I was going to say, I is this it. why? Probably, like I probably, um, because you've yeah, if you've ever heard the term like it's a bad egg, I've I've always been like, what does that even mean? No, I know. So I crack this egg, and like, <laughs> I can't. Every time I tell it, I feel so ill. I cracked it, and I went to like just go like that, and ugh, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> this is why you like this story because it makes me dry right. So I went to crack it, and like just a little bit of white came out. Ugh. 
and the smell. So I'm like, I'm like, what's wrong with this egg? So I look at it and I all I see was like, <laughs> like black, like the chick. It was probably a, a dead chick. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I like, and and this is what made it worse. I had already put the heat on. So now it was hot off. Oh. So there's Effie. So immediately I put it in like, cause when I cook, I put like a little bag with like, um, for like, you know, when I'm peeling veggies, I put it in like the bag, wrapped it, like chucked it in the bin. And then I'm like, huh, 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 trying to like get the bit of white out of the pan, turn off the heat. And then I go to put it underwater, which makes it smell worse. Oh. I was like, oh, that, that night I was like, huh, but I, <laughs> Oh my goodness. And I'm scarred. Like I still crack my eggs the way I know how to do it, like straight into the pan, but I cannot say how many times I've gone to crack an egg and I'm like, if it's like a little bit hard when I crack it, I'm like, not again. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, a bad egg That's is real. a bad egg. Yeah, a bad egg is real. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You've made me relive things that I never wanted to think about. Again. We had to. It was my fault that you had to retell it, but we had to. Well, I hope you all enjoyed watching me in discomfort. <laughs> do you do you mind before we get out get out of here? Um, maybe a, one or two Astro voice lines. <laughs> Yeah, I can try because you know, I just I I haven't listened to anything Astro in ages. <laughs> I feel like have you done any voice like? I'm not allowed to say. No, no, no. I, I was gonna say, I was gonna say like, <laughs> have you? Yeah, you know what? Never mind. I, I feel like that. It'll be the yeah. What's whatever. It'll be the same answer. <laughs> yeah, I I felt like I could. Because I wasn't originally asking that, but then I was like, I'm indirectly asking that. Okay, you're yeah. not you're not gonna answer, but I just wanna I just want you to know what I was gonna say. So no answer. I was gonna say, like, have you done the Astro voice in a while? And then I'm like like meaning on like a podcast or whatever, and it's like, well then she's record she's been probably recording at least in the past since we've done a podcast, so she probably had so it's it's whatever. So that's. <laughs> but yeah, on I haven't had interviews, like I haven't had any interviews for a while, um, and what I was going to tell you earlier, which is in regards to this, is I was I'm really thinking about um, learning how to play. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah, I've got to learn how to play because there are a few people that have reached out asking um, if we can play together. And I really do. Like, I like Astro Maze. Every time I've met an Astro Maze on the socials, um, I'm like, oh, you guys are just so nice. So I want to learn so that I can play with, with them. But um, I've got to get my console together or whatever I need to make sure that people can actually enjoy watching me, you know, Attempt have, and fail. Have you seen this girl, I'm Casey, on, um, on uh, TikTok? TikTok? Yeah. Does she have? Does she have like curly, yeah, afro she, hair? Yeah, she has like an afro hair. Yeah, I think I've I've seen. She's got. She played. She's an Astro main. Um, yeah, I've seen her on t on TikTok. Um, but we've never actually interacted before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I follow, we follow each other. I mean, I love her content and stuff. So, mm. um, yeah, I think that would be cool. I bet she would freak out if you reached out or said something. <laughs> is that? Yeah, is, is I, that but, like, but I've got to be really good before I do that because I cannot. Well, I, I was just saying, like, just say anything to her, like, about, or just acknowledge that she plays Astro or whatever. I better be on the list to play with you. 
Better oh, yeah. I thought you were going to teach me, but... Oh, okay. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That's, that's <laughs> the plan. We've set it in stone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I could probably try and be self-taught. That in itself, I think, would cause great... Oh, great I don't, I don't work. think that would be very fun for you to, to try to figure that out on your figure own. Figure it out. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to... I'm going to... That's on my list for this year. Yes. Um, I reckon... Yeah, you know, being a performer, it's so hard to just like have a stable like um schedule. But I'm I'm sure it'll stabilize in a few months. Um after we've had a few episodes and stuff and I'll be like, "Okay, this is it. I'm ready." And you'll be like, "Okay." So that's my plan. Okay. Um Can can we get uh I'm on a, I know you've probably done this one before, but it's such a good one. I'm on a higher plane, Chale, literally. Literally. I have to remember. I'm going to try how I remember it. Okay. Perfect. I'm on a higher plane, Chale, literally. Mm. Was that wanna, close? Yeah, it was good. Do you want to uh, lay it to rest? for one final time on why you, you know, you've gone, you've gone <laughs> in, the, in the astral realm before. You know, I've grown up, haven't I? Like, I've, I haven't done it like this for a while. Yeah, I know. I was, um, I was wondering if you were going to do it or not. Yeah, I thought about it and I was like, I was like, let me just put my head down because I think it's from, I, I a few really great people have asked me to do, um, cameos in the last year for their um like birthday messages for their their friends um and I think because I can't do that on there I've become a bit more confident <laughs> when I first started out I was just like what I make a weird face why would you want to see that and then now I'm like Meh, I'm all right mm. but I can do it are you ready the same the same line yeah do it okay I'm on a Literally. Perfect. <laughs> um, can we get a daggers girl goes bye bye? Oh, I don't know. What is it? Daggers. Daggers girl goes bye bye. Goes bye bye. Oh, I don't know if I remember how I said that. You're fine. You got it. <laughs> um. Darkest girls go bye bye. That was good. Was that it? Is that how she does it? Yeah. I, I do it. Yeah. I also yeah. don't. I don't play very much Valorant anymore. So a lot of this stuff. Oh. Is it? Moved on, have we? I don't play very much video games at all. Too good for the games now, are we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that's painful. It is painful because it's just like the it's just like the dang movies where it's like I want to do it, but like when I'm doing it, I'm not enjoying it. So enjoying it, yeah. No, that no, I hear that, and yeah, I know. I love coloring in. That's what I've been. That's my new thing. It's not new. I, I used to do it a lot, but yeah, coloring in is now like. And I noticed my mom does it too. She like, she'll be like, bring my coloring in stuff. She's got a huge pencil case with texts and pencils and tins. And you know those really complicated coloring in books that have like super intricate like designs? Yeah. Like Yeah, that's what she's on. Mm. Mm. I like it. Yeah. My mom does like these little they're called like dots. And like you just place a single dot on the <gasps> thing and then it makes Yes. Yeah. She does that. The little diamond piece? Yeah. Yeah, I have that too. Anything therapeutic like that. I've, I do cross stitch, cross stitching and paper tolling and yeah, lots of stuff. Yeah. I like it. I think, yeah. I think we're just about there. Um, we've done about 50 minutes now. So that's a, yeah, that's a big chat. Yeah, it was. It's always mm. such a pleasure talking to you. I'm glad that we're setting up more times to to catch up and 
further the relationship and get to know more about each other and um, share that with the world. So I'm excited. Uh, as always, I appreciate your time. Um, again, Ditto. so lovely to chat. Yes, and I appreciate your patience too because I'm always late to the chat. So it's thanks awesome. for that, for accommodating my just too unstable schedule, but we'll get there. Um, and I'm sure we'll, we'll record again in the next, couple of days right yeah so we can, yeah i'm always free for you so oh. <laughs> make me emotional because i'm not even free for me like uh, it's just so annoying i can't even catch a break <laughs> but i'll let you know um perfect asap but yeah it's been good appreciate everyone for watching and uh, we'll see you guys next time See you.